The Cave of the Oil Bird by Shula Myth Leve Openheim. I'm nine years old today and Manuela has a surprise for me. Happy birthday, Carla, he calls when he sees me. I'm going to take you to into the rainforest today, deeper and farther than you have ever been, because I want you to discover the Cave of the Oil Birds. That's my present to you. He puts a flashlight and mosquito repellent into his back pocket. We'll need these, he explains. I can tell from his voice he's excited. I'm excited too. I have a question. Manuelo, you've been to the cave and many other people have been to the cave. How can I discover something that has already been discovered? My brother squats down beside me when we talk because he is very tall. Every time someone sees something for the first time, he answers quietly, it is a discovery. I think Manuelo is very wise. We start down the path that leads away from our house into the forest. The sun is shooting golden arrows through the canopy of thick leathery leaves. Some of them are shaped like canoe paddles. Manuelo and I walk slowly. I love my rainforest. The earth is moist and red, and there is no grass or shrubs. The bulging roots prop up ancient trees with the names like milk and monkey pot and incense. When will I get to the cave? I look up at Manuelo. Wait. Manuelo puts a finger to his lips. I think I know what he means. In the rainforest, you really should not speak. You look and you listen. We have been walking for a very long time. The path is dropping sharply now. I hear water gur gurgling. I want to race ahead, but I don't. Manuelo peers through the trees. He walks a short distance into the forest, then comes back to the path. He once told me that if you hurry in the rainforest, you could miss something very interesting and very beautiful. And he's right. Suddenly, we are standing in front of a rock cliff with shallow water bubbling over brown and yellow stones. In, a, in the cliff is a dark opening. The bellbird clangs out. My heart is pounding, and I hold Manuelo's hand tightly as we step from slippery stone to another, till we are close to the mouth of the cave. Manuelo turns on his flashlight and runs the light along the cave walls. At first, I don't see anything except sharp rocks sticking out from the sides of the cave. I open my eyes as wide as I can, till I feel wrinkles in my forehead. I peer and peer. Then, I see two red dots appear, two more and two more. And then, around those red dots, faces begin to shape. Faces with stiff whiskers pointing downward on each side of hooked beaks. The faces are still as stones, not moving, moving even one bit, and the eyes are starting without, staring without a blink. The oil birds, my brother mouths the words. He has the same look on his face as the time when the mot mot bird perched in the immortal tree outside of our house. Manuela moves the light up and down the walls, and I can see another pair of eyes, and another, and another and more and more heads appear around the eyes. Serious heads and whiskers are hooked and hooked beaks, silent and still like statues. They must be hundreds. I feel goosebumps rising all over me. Are the oil birds staring at me? I shiver, and Manuela pulls me close to him. There isn't a sound except the water gurgling over the stones. I don't know how long we stand in the cave of the oil birds, but it must be a very long time. When Manuela turns off his flashlight, we start back across the stones and up the path. Did you like the oil birds, Carla? What have you been thinking? Manuela asks me. I don't have, I don't answer right away, but I have been thinking. Oh, Manuelo, that was the best birthday present ever, I whisper. Will you take me here again, please, please? He smiles. Of course I will. There are very few oil birds left in the world. We must protect them so that other children can discover them. My brother is very wise. I don't think I will make another discovery as special as this for a long, long, long time. Number one, read the paragraph. Circle the two underlined words or phrases that best help the reader under understand the meaning of the word peer. Manolo turns on his flashlight and runs the light along the cave walls. At first, I don't see anything except sharp rocks sticking out from the sides of the cave. I open my eyes as wide as I can till I feel wrinkles in my forehead. I peer and peer. Then I, set two, I see two red dots appear two more and two more and then around the red those red dots faces begin to shape faces with stiff whiskers pointing downward on each side of hooked beaks the faces are still as stones not moving even one bit and the eyes are staring without a blink number two which sentence best explains why manuelo put a finger to his lips in the passage a he is tired of hearing his sister talk b he hears something and wants to point it out to carla C. 
see, he wants Carla to appreciate all the sights and sounds in the journey. D, he doesn't want animals to hear them in the forest. Number three, where do the oil birds live? A, in the trees. B, in a cave. C, along the river. D, on the forest floor. Four, what is the main lesson Carla learns in the story? A, birthday surprises are the best kind of surprises. B, the world is full of amazing discoveries if you take the time to go slowly and look. C, the rainforest is a great place for an adventure. D, oil birds are interesting creatures with red dots and stiff whiskers around the, their beaks. Number five, which two details from the passage best support the answer to question four? A, in the rainforest, you really should not speak. You look and you listen. B, the sun is shooting golden arrows through the canopy of thick leathery leaves. C, he once told me that if you hurry in the rainforest, you could miss something very interesting and very beautiful. D, around those red dot faces begin to shape. Faces with stiff whiskers pointing downward on each side of hooked beaks. E, oh Manuelo, that was the best birthday present ever, I whisper.